Hey guys, what's going on? This is John from Friends of Your Benefits. Lately, I've been having fun discussing with you guys some exciting topics such as lifestyle spending accounts and digital healthcare solutions that are out there and emerging in the marketplace. But today we have a little bit more of a serious topic to talk about. So at the end of the year coming up, many people are out there filling up their scripts for the rest of the year, getting some last minute preventive exams done. And some people unfortunately are getting some very tough diagnoses such as cancer or multiple sclerosis. Now look, as a cancer survivor from my childhood, this is a topic that's really near and dear to my heart. And with a ton of information on the web and social media, it can be really hard to find the information that you need to make informed decisions about your healthcare. I recently had the opportunity to sit down with Dr. Mary Mulcair from Sumas, our virtual specialty provider that really goes over what you need to do if you happen to get a tough diagnosis or perhaps you need to talk about your ongoing healthcare journey. Stay tuned. So Dr. Mary, if you don't mind, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about your background and what you enjoy most about practicing medicine? I am an emergency medicine physician, um, have been training primarily and working primarily in the New York City market for the last decade and a half, um, and mostly in academic medical centers. I'm also subspecialized in geriatrics and specifically geriatric emergency medicine. Um, so folks essentially that are 80 and up are most in my wheelhouse and who I really enjoy taking care of. And then about, about a year and a half ago, almost at this point, I actually moved over to Sumas and became the chief medical officer for Sumas um, and really have enjoyed this transition into the virtual specialty care space and really expanding our reach and helping as many people as possible. Well, very cool. And today we're definitely going to dive into that, Mary. So Dr. Mary, you know, I guess just to really go into it, right? Not unlike the labor market in general, I think I saw a recent survey out there from Bain. And if I remember the survey correctly, the survey basically said there's a lot of physicians out there who are really burnt out, right? What are your thoughts on that? And is this something that Sumas perhaps can help with? Yeah, it's a very, very real issue. It had gone up with, with COVID and we thought maybe that was it. And sort of as COVID quiet, hopefully it would go away. People would rebound, get back to their happy practicing selves. And we haven't quite seen that. You know, I think a lot of the stressors have remained and my colleagues across the country, both in emergency medicine and outside of emergency medicine, you know, I think emergency medicine was hit exceedingly hard with all this, but folks across the board are tired um, and they're burned out. And I think the advantage though, of where healthcare has gone a bit and with the advancement of the virtual environment and virtual specialty care and virtual care in general is that there are options out there. Um, and the physicians are really able to expand their reach in different ways and really develop different types of relationships with patients than they had previously in terms of sharing their their knowledge, being able to guide people in different ways. I really think, you know, to get to the second half of your question about Sumis is that, you know, we allow physicians to really do what they went to med school to do. You know, we take away a lot of the red tape and a lot of the the issues that come with you know your your traditional brick and mortar practice, and we set a stage where the physicians can really just talk to somebody and educate them, guide them on their diagnosis, guide them on their options, really help them understand you know why they've been told what they've been told and what their options are going forward and how to how to make a decision. So I guess you're of the mindset that virtual care is here to stay. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so one thing I just want your opinion on, uh, Doctor Mary. So. I think I saw that the former sur uh, Surgeon General out there, Dr. Jerome Adams, he recently said that, hey, lifestyle medicine and really getting people to make changes as it relates to their lifestyle is now more important than ever before, right? What are your thoughts on that? He is a very um, eloquent speaker. I heard him speak at the American College of Lifestyle Medicine recently, and he had a lot of really interesting things to say, everything about, you know, how our current health care system is very reactive, as we all know, you know, people get reimbursed for treating the ill rather than keeping people healthy, which is hopefully a way that we can, you know, shift the overall trajectory of healthcare in general. Um, but interestingly, when he was, when folks tried to pin him on how do we fix this, right, which no, you know, no one has a magic answer, but he's got a lot of experience. And his answer came in two parts. And, and the first part was, well, one about lifestyle medicine and the advantages of really teaching people how to care for themselves and, and the pillars involved in that, you know, including, you know, nutrition, sleep, exercise, 
um, healthy sleep habits, you know, avoiding certain risky behaviors, really being socially connected with those folks, things along those lines and really promoting that. But then the other half of his question was, you know, his, and his answer really was around how can we do that? And that was focused on employers and telehealth were, were the combination of his answers. Um, and he was really pointing to employers because he said that, you know, employers are really, you know, the house of healthcare for a lot of people and really the ones who are driving healthcare, driving the options that people have in healthcare and driving, you know, how their employees are educated on, you know, the options within the healthcare spectrum that they have and really providing those options to folks. And then the telehealth world, you know, telehealth and using virtual care, virtual specialty care, you know, you name the different virtual options is really a way of breaking down social determinants of health, you know, really getting to some of the key drivers that that are causing a lot of costs in our system, you know, by educating people, by helping with health literacy, so people make the right decision, hopefully the first time around, rather than just bouncing around the healthcare system and things along those lines. You know, hearing employers and hearing telehealth were music to my ears, because that's what we do, (laughs) you know, and I think um, the other thing I'd say is sort of to corroborate his thoughts from several months ago, you know, Sumas was just named the CB Insights top 150 digital health companies out there, which we're very proud of. Wow. Congratulations. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, thanks. So, you know, so right on the heels of hearing that straight from his mouth to this, you know, I think, I think we're validated and I think it's out there. It's just a matter of getting, you know, getting as many people on board as possible. Absolutely. So I'm curious your perspective on this, right? So obviously, you know, you're a physician, right? When COVID hit, what was like the biggest change from your perspective about treating medicine as it related to virtual care, right? You're not having people necessarily come in the office, but we're kind of like FaceTiming for lack of a better mm-hmm. term. What was, what did that feel like, honestly? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's a weird, it was initially a little bit of an odd transition because in medicine, we're used to hands-on, right? You know, a lot of what we learn is all about the physical exam mm-hmm. and how you need to do it. They're very, you know, they're some relatively strict ways you go about it, but then there's also a lot that just comes with experience, quite frankly. And but I think what the really pleasant thing that most of us found when we transitioned virtually, you know, probably because we had to, you know, to, to right, reach yeah. people. But what we realized very quickly is that you know a lot of the skills that we've learned over the years translate exceedingly well into this medium. You know, you can talk a patient through a physical exam. You can really focus in on the history in a in this medium where. When you're in an emergency room with, you know, things beeping, a million people talking to you, EKGs getting handed to you, you know, it's really hard to sometimes just focus on a person's history and understand what they're telling you. And in this medium, I've got no other distractions. It's it's you and me. It's me understanding where you're coming from, what what's happened to you, why we're talking right now. Um, And so I think it actually lets physicians get back to the root of what they do. Right. Well, they're very interesting. And I guess one thing that, that I'm thinking about and I'm hearing from some of my clients out there in the employer space, right? For the first time ever, it looks like cancer is going to be the number one driver of healthcare costs in the future. Now, on a personal note, this is something that is really near and dear to my heart. When I was a baby, I had a rare form of cancer. Mm-hmm. I'm totally good now, but I definitely still have the port marks over here to prove it. But it's definitely you know, really sad when you hear of all the cancer cases going up and the late stage diagnoses, right? So let's say, you know, unfortunately, you happen to be a person, you're not feeling well, you go, maybe you go for that annual exam and they notice something, right? And you get that diagnosis, the big C word, cancer. <laughs> so there's a lot, it's really tough when you get that diagnosis, right? So let's say there's an employer out there and they offer it to their employees and the employee says, all right, let me check this thing out called Sumus. Can you kind of walk me through the process of how that works and really what Sumus ultimately does? Yeah, no, happy to. So, and sorry, but I'm glad you look great. So I think Thank you. it looks like you got through it, with a, you know, two scars, but you look fabulous. So um, the, yeah, so Sumus is, is a very broad funnel and, and sort of by design, we meet people wherever they are on their health journey. So, and, when, and that's a little different from some of the other, you know, options that exist out there right. where Sumus, you come into us when you've just heard the word, maybe I have cancer all the way through to, you know, you've been in a clinical trial, haven't gone the way you hoped and you're looking for what's next. And we can meet you anywhere on that journey. You know, in our mind, preferably, we'd like to meet you at the very beginning, even, you know, even when you just 
are maybe even not quite feeling well and going into that first appointment and want to understand what questions you should ask, you know, or what type of testing might be ahead of you or what you should think about, you know, up till, you know, your next appointment where you're talking about getting, maybe getting genetic sequencing done and specifically what, you know, how you narrow in on what type of cancer it is and what the appropriate therapies are going to be, you know, we're happy to be right there with you and help guide you in terms of what you should ask, what you should think about what your different options are all the way through to expert consultations, mm-hmm. you know, depending on what the cancer is. And especially, you know, as you know, well, probably dealing with something fairly rare in, you know, in the pediatric population, you know, we can get, sometimes there's one person in the world <laughs> that knows something about that cancer mm-hmm. and really drilling in on who that person is. And understand getting a chance to meet with them and understand your situation and understand what might be available to you and what you should think about going forward is really important. So that's incredible, right? So let's go back in time, 1985, right? So let's say Sumas was around then, right? And obviously virtual care wasn't. And if that was the case and my parents had access to it, would they potentially have been able to, you know, talk to a top pediatric cancer specialist Mm -hmm. for my case? Of course. Yep. Definitely. And, but, and I think the key though is not any pediatric cancer specialist, right? You know, the, the key is really understanding, you know, what, you know, specifically what cancer, where you are in the journey, what your questions are. Um, cause we also find a lot of times folks come in to speak with us and they may come in thinking, I need this type of specialist. Um, yeah. and the reality is we talk to them about what the issue is and actually like they need somebody different than who they thought they needed. You know, and it happens a lot in pediatrics, actually. Like take, for example, you know, a baby that's not gaining weight, right? And they think that they need to immediately go talk to a GI specialist because it's something to do with their feeding, right? Well, it may not have anything to do with the feeding at all. And they actually need to talk to a developmental, you know, pediatric developmental specialist to really, you know, try and hone in on what the specific issue is. No, definitely very interesting. So I, I guess just to narrow it down, right? So um, let's go to my current um, diagnoses right now. So I'm not sure, honestly, if there's something that you guys do, but really just curious for your take on this, um, Dr. Mary, if that's okay. Yeah. So recently I found out I had my annual physical this year, all the way back in January, and hard to believe it's soon going to be 2023. Wow. <laughs> so when I went for my annual physical, I found out that I have a potassium deficit. And I guess my numbers had dropped to a low enough level that my PCP basically said, hey, John, you need to see a nephrologist. I'm a little concerned, Mm -hmm. right? Go to nephrologist. I get a ton of tests done. I have to get this thing called a blood gas test done. Not pleasant. I don't recommend that anyone ever get that done. No. I definitely passed that along the way, but hey, made it here. All good. So I'll test back and the nephrologist put me on a routine of taking a potassium supplement, a magnesium supplement, and then a diuretic. Mm. So really just curious, right? So if you're to look at my information, how do you assess if that's necessarily the right information? And then I guess as a follow-up question, is it possible that it could be related to my condition very early in life? Yeah. So the approach we would take to something like this is, you know, is twofold. One is first learning, you know, how you got to the point of diagnosis. Now for you, it was routine blood work, which is a pretty simple answer, you know, but you'd also just want to make sure that you know, you didn't have muscle weakness or any of the, you know, sort of cardiac abnormalities. There are a lot of different things that can go with having a low potassium. So it's just important for us to understand sort of where you've come from, the testing that you've had done, what the results were of it, and then us to understand your understanding of what that all means and why, right? You know, because from our perspective, it's really important that you know, uh, you know, what the diagnosis is, what it means, where it came from, why we think you have it, and then what we need to do about it going forward. Um, And specifically, you know, what things you need to discuss with your doctor, right? And so for you, you know, it would be a matter of, okay, so your potassium's low. Well, why do we think your potassium's low? You know, potassium, usually you lose it in most likely one of two ways, you know, either from your GI system or from your urinary system, you know, are sort of the two ways you lose it. And so understanding how you're losing your potassium, why it's running low, then helps us understand how to best replete your potassium and how to get your potassium levels back up. Um, and so making sure that, you know, you're in sync with that and in sync with your doctor. And then also making sure that you know what questions to ask, what type of follow-up you should be expecting, you know, at what, you know, what cadence you should go. Like, hey, have you also had an EKG done just to make sure that your heart is looking okay? 
Um, have you, you know, had any of this other testing that you might need done? Yes, no, maybe, or, Hey, you actually, you know, they just sent you down this whole route of getting all these tests done, like not necessary. Um, but then also, you know, just being able to help you understand what you should watch out for in the future. Cause I also think that's where a lot of anxiety stems and that's where a lot of people end up utilizing the healthcare system a lot when they don't necessarily need to, it's just because they don't know, like, right. You like, you may not know that, you know, if you do get a lot of like really significant muscle weaknesses, yes, you do need to go see, get seen, right? But if you just have a fever, that doesn't just, that, you know, that may be nothing due to anything else, you know, and, and you can treat your fever the same way. Yeah. You can treat your fever the same way you treat everybody else's fever, right? So uh, just people just need to understand those differences. And I think that reducing people's anxiety around healthcare really helps significantly. Oh, very interesting. So is it possible that it's related to my childhood uh, diagnosis or the treatment I received? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so I think I have a few questions around like specifically what kind of treatments you did get. Um, Because my guess is, is probably related, you know, the, you know, likelihood is it is. Um, Some people, sometimes people get very random things that don't necessarily fit together for no reason. But, you know, Occam's razor tells you that most likely you know, most likely the two are related. And so I think it's a little bit about, you know, what sort of, you know, medications did you have? Chemotherapeutics did you have back in the day? Did you have any specific radiation? Were your kidneys impacted at all based on what was happening to you? Because that would then, you know, if your kidneys were impacted, that would explain why your potassium is low now. Um, And then the good news is, you know why? So you don't necessarily need to hunt for other things. Sure. (laughs) Right? So, so that, sort of relieving in and of itself. Absolutely. So when, let me put it another way. So for companies out there who are considering putting in some form of expert medical advice, right? So it looks like we may be entering in a recession and the CFOs are taking out their calculators and they're really looking at ROI. For a solution out there such as Sumus, how does an employer actually go about evaluating whether or not this makes sense for their employees and maybe their dependents? Sort of two parts to that. I think most, you know, most in the HR world and, you know, the C suites uh, don't doubt the overall benefit to somebody's health and their overall psyche as to what we do. Like that's always been very clear. But how you demonstrate an ROI <laughs> that makes it, you know, makes it viable to their bottom line, especially sort of with Absolutely. You know, the potential economic conditions we're headed into, um, is, a, is a huge issue. Um, and so, actually, one of the things I'm most proud of. Other, among many things Sumus has done in the last <laughs> that last year, but we've um, so we actually created our own methodology around calculating medical cost ROI, which we just had externally validated from Millman. Um, and they'll, you'll, there'll be a lot more information coming out on this as a whole separate. I'm happy to launch into this at a whole a whole separate <laughs> time. Um, but we've created a new way of calculating it. That's that's honest, reliable, reproducible, you know, and really understands how we at Sumus are impacting episodes of care. You know, we're specifically looking at episodes rather than overall trend, which, you know, we can't take credit for. You know, it's hard. There's so many things that go into a trend that, you know, Absolutely. that I sort of shied away from that. And I think episodes are really what it's about. It's about being condition specific. Like we can drill down on our medical cost savings in specific conditions, categories, so that employers can really understand where they're saving. And then it also that extrapolates to larger industries, right? Because depending on the industry, employee populations are different and different things will will translate. Um, and then also doing a cost savings that's geolocalized. You know, so a, a knee replacement in Indiana is very different from a knee replacement in New York City, right? right. In terms of the overall cost and what goes into it. So anyway, happy to dive more into that in the in the future. Um, but it's it's really exciting. And I think we've got a, a very reliable way of helping employers understand what the actual cost savings is of implementing us. One question I have for you is, is there any employee cost? Like, let's say an employer puts this in place. Does it cost the employees like $50 or anything? No, no copay, no cost to the employees, which is what's yeah. beautiful about it. Great for the employees and the physicians love it, which is also okay. great. That's awesome. Wow. That's really cool. So Mary, just really to close out, so let's say there's an employer out there and they really want to learn more about Sumus, or perhaps they're seeing our conversation and they have some follow-up questions for you. Where can they go to actually connect with you or learn more information on Sumus? 
Yeah. So yeah, please feel free to reach out. Um, easiest ac- access point is www.thumisglobal.com. You can come on right in and, you know, there are plenty of buttons to push to ask us a question and get connected and we're happy to chat. Awesome. Well, Dr. Mary, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it. Yep. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And for our audience out there, we want to hear from you guys. Is expert medical advice something that you'd consider for your employees? And if so, what do you envision that would look like? Comment below.